Let me back up a step further and let's look at supervised learning more generally. Our example so far was one of classification. And the characteristic of classification is that the target labels or the target class is discrete. In our case, it was actually binary. In many problems, we try to predict a continuous quantity, for example, in the interval 0 to 1, or perhaps a real number. Those machine learning problems are called regression problems. Regression problems are fundamentally different from classification problems. For example, our base network doesn't afford us an answer to a problem where the target value could be in 0 or 1. A regression problem, for example, would be one to predict the weather tomorrow. Temperature is a continuous value. Our base network would not be able to predict the temperature. It only uh, can predict uh, discrete classes. A regression algorithm is able to give us a continuous prediction about the temperature tomorrow. So let's look into regression next. So here's my first quiz for you on regression. This scatter plot shows for Berkeley, California, for a period of time, the data for each house that was sold. Each dot is a sold house. And it graphs the size of the house in square feet to the sales price in thousands of dollars. And as you can see, roughly speaking, as the size of the house goes up, so does the sales price. I wonder for a house of about 2,500 square feet, what is the approximate sales price you would assume based just on the scatter plot data? Is it 400k, 600k, 800k, or 1000k? Pick the one that looks most plausible. And my answer is there seems to be a roughly linear relationship, maybe not quite linear, uh, between the house size and the price. So if you look at a linear graph that best describes the data, you get this dashed line over here. And for the dashed line, if you walk up the 2,500 square feet, you end up with roughly 800k. So this would have been the best answer. Now, obviously, you can answer this question without understanding anything about regression. But what you find is, this is different from classification as before. This is not a binary concept anymore of like expensive and cheap. It's really a relationship between two variables, one you care about, the house price, and one that you can observe, which is the house in size and square feet. And your goal is to really fit a curve that best explains the data. Once again, we have a case where we can play Occam's razor. There's clearly a data fit that's nonlinear that might be better, like this one over here. And when you go to high nonlinear curves, you might even be inclined to draw a curve like this. Now, of course, the curve I'm drawing right now is likely an overfit, and you don't want to postulate that this is the general relationship between the size of a house and the sales price. So, even though my black curve might describe the data better, the blue curve or the dashed linear curve over here might be better explanations uh, by virtue of Occam's razor. So let's look a little bit deeper into what we call regression. As in all regression problems, our data will be comprised of input vectors of length n that map to now a continuous value we might be given a total of m data points. This is familiar from the classification case, except this time the y's are continuous. Once again, we're looking for a function f that maps our vector x into y. In linear regression, the function has a particular form, which is w1 times x plus w is 0, in the case x is a one-dimensional, which is n equals 1. Or in the higher-dimensional space, we might just write w times x plus w is 0, where w is a vector, and x is a vector, and this is the inner product of these two vectors over here. But let's for now just consider the one-dimensional case. In this quiz, I'm giving you the linear regression form with two unknown parameters, w1, w0. I'm giving you a data set 
In this data set, it happens to be fittable by a linear regression model without any uh, residual error. Without any math, can you look at this and find out to me what the two parameters W0 and W1 are? This is a surprisingly challenging question. If we look at these numbers from 3 to 6, when we increase x by 3, y decreases by 3, which suggests w1 is minus 1. Now let's see if this holds. If we increase x by 3, we decrease y by 3. If we increase x by 1, we decrease y by 1. If we increase x by 2, we decrease y by 2. So this number seems to be an exact fit. Next, we have to get the constant w0, right? For x equals 3, we get minus 3 as an expression over here because we know w1 equals minus 1. So if this has to equal 0 in the end, then w0 has to be 3. Let's do a quick check. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3. And if you plug in the other numbers, you find those are correct. Now this is the case of an exact data set. It gets much more challenging if the data set cannot be fit with a linear function.